There once was a great metropolis, its technology unrivaled. Its people lived in luxury as machines did their bidding. But one day, a great disaster struck, and the once monumental buildings that reached tall to the heavens lay waste to rust in time. Reclaimed by nature to be born anew, this is the story of Xanarkand. Hello and welcome to Logan Rando Aquascaping. My name is Logan and today I've got a brand new nano build for you guys inside my Ultimate Nature Systems 5N. This is a four gallon tank and I'm super excited for this build because it uses some amazing elements like the really cool dragon wood from Boost Plant as well as a bunch of beautiful tissue culture plants from UNS that I got from Boost Plant. So before we get started with today's step-by-step -step tutorial, I wanna give a huge shout out and thanks to Boost Plant for providing me with the soil, the dragon wood, as well as the tissue culture plants. So let's get started. So before I laid down the substrate system and began hardscaping, I decided to do a very quick mock-up. And the idea of a mock-up is it lets you sort of get a feel for how large the elements are inside of the tank itself, you know, how easily you're gonna be able to manipulate them. And it'll also help you decide what your key elements are gonna be. So I came up with this right here, and while the final results ended up being quite a bit different, it just kind of gave me a good idea of how the wood was sitting in the tank and how much it drew my eye. So once I had that under my belt, I took a picture and I got ready to add the substrate system. So today's substrate system consists of some root tabs as well as UNS Contra soil. And when you're working with an aqua soil like UNS Contra soil, you don't necessarily have to use root tabs. The soil is a complete bottom layer substrate. It's gonna provide everything your plants need to really thrive. And the reason that I like to use root tabs is because for the first few weeks of an aquascape's life, I don't dose nutrients into the water column. I find that that kind of gives green algae a really strong chance of thriving. So I let the plants rely on a really nutrient rich substrate system. And then, you know, maybe every three to six months or so, I'll replace those root tabs. So once the root tabs were in place, I added a thin layer of UNS Contra soil and I sloped it slightly toward the back. By sloping your substrate toward the back, it's gonna provide sort of an enhanced sense of depth. And now it was time to play with the hardscape. So today I'm working with the beautiful dragon wood that Boost Plant sent to me, as well as the vesicular basalt, which I collected locally in the Oregon area. So when I was conceptualizing this scape in my mind, as soon as I saw the dragon wood, I knew I wanted to kind of play with the verticality of the holes and the pores and the striations. They're such high impact pieces that I just knew right away, I really want to make it look very vertical and sort of replicate the idea of a fallen metropolis. So that was the inspiration and all the best scapers start with a story or a theme or a concept. So probably for the first time ever, I really had a strong story in mind. So for me, the dragonwood in this scape sort of represents huge skyscrapers that have kind of sunk into the ground and been flooded and are now tilted. And supporting the dragonwood is a stone that I collected locally in the Oregon area. This is a stone that's super common in this area and it's a type of basalt. Specifically, it's called vesicular basalt. And the cool thing about this stone is just like the dragonwood, it has those really interesting pores that it achieved from erosion. And I think it sort of looks very cohesive because it also has a very muted color and it supports the wood very well visually as well as structurally. Because when you're working with very vertical pieces that sort of defy gravity and aquascaping, it's really important that you support those pieces. And once the key elements were in place, I decided to glue things together. And for me, it's really important to glue elements that aren't completely steady because oftentimes in the first few weeks of an aquascape's life, especially in the case of wood, you're gonna be scrubbing it a lot. Wood tends to grow a very thick, gooey biofilm that can be really stubborn. And if you're scrubbing really hard with an electric toothbrush, if your hardscape elements aren't really steady, they're gonna move around and possibly fall over. So I used a cyanoacrylate based super glue and it's really important that you use a liquid type. So I use cigarette filters that I've purchased from Amazon. I kind of unwind them and I use the little pieces of cotton to provide a medium between the two hardscape elements. You 
You pour the liquid type superglue on, you get a exothermic chemical reaction and it bonds it together like concrete. And once the gluing was complete, it was time to take a step back, look at that camera monitor and see what was missing and look for the holes. See what visually is just begging to be filled with some sort of an element. And that's what I did. And I saw there were some holes and I saw I could sort of enhance the layers. So specifically in the back left, I decided to lay down more dragon wood. And then I sort of filled out the layering with smaller pieces that I actually broke off from larger elements. And once those were in place, I was super satisfied with the hardscape. I think it really achieves the idea of representing that fallen metropolis where the buildings are sinking and they're sort of leaning over, but they're not leaning over so much where they feel like they could fall every second. I think the stone really supports them both structurally and visually. And now that the substrate system and the hardscape are both in place, it's time for my favorite part, the planting. And today I'm really fortunate to be working with beautiful UNS tissue culture cups. These were sent to me courtesy of Boost Plant. Head on over to their website and check them out. All the links for all the plants I'm using as well as the hardscape is going to be in the description. So when I'm planting a new tank, I like to do the plant prep before I start planting because once I'm planting, I'm in my flow state. I don't want it to be interrupted. So what I do is I grab a small bowl of lukewarm water and then I open up the tissue culture plants one at a time. And UNS tissue culture plants have a gel medium that keeps the plant alive and feeds it and keeps it together. So what I do is I dip the plant into the water and I sort of delicately massage off that gel medium. And you know, after about 30 seconds or so, you'll get most of it. And then either by hand or using scissors, you can break the plant into the desired amount of portions. Most of the plants will have very natural points of breaking off, but when in doubt, you can pretty much break things anywhere. Just look to break it by the root system. And then once I have those individual plantlets, depending on how much gel is left, I'll dip those little little plantlets into the water as well. You want to remove as much of that gel off as possible, but it's okay if a little bit is left. Just do your best. So now that my plant prep is complete, it is time to plant and bring some color to this very muted landscape. Starting in the back, I decided to frame the background on the left and the right with the beautiful cryptocrine green gecko. And I have this plant in my UNS60U and it is really beautiful. It is a bright green, hence the name green gecko. And it just grows quite large if you let it. However, if you keep the leaves very well trimmed and manicured and pruned, you can promote very tight, compact, bushy growth. And then continuing this theme of sort of framing areas, I framed the midground with Alternanthera rynickii mini. And in my opinion, this is one of the easiest red aquarium plants you can keep. Pretty much under all conditions, it's gonna display a fairly vibrant red, and it's just really low maintenance. It does often melt a little bit in the beginning, but it always tends to come back, and it's just absolutely beautiful. And now we're gonna begin adding some mid-ground details. And for this, I want little pops of colors and clumps of plants. So I have some more crypts to work with and I decided to plant the Cryptocrine Wendatii Brown. Same genus and species as the Crypt Green Gecko. It's just a different variety. So this is gonna have more of a brownie slash green look to it. And I've never personally kept it, so I'm excited. And now continuing our theme of providing a transition from the foreground to the midground, as well as some pops of color and highlights, I'm planting the beautiful Hydrocotyl Verticillata. And this plant is really, really cool because it creates these sort of mushroom-like leaves. And for me, it has a very fantasy look to it. So I'm really excited to be working with this. And I think it's really gonna add to that fantasy vibe that I'm going for. So I planted that on the left and right in key positions that sort of catch your eye and provide some color contrast. And then I decided to plant the foreground. And today I have one of my all time favorites, the beautiful tight compact Hemianthus calicotroids cuba otherwise known as HC Cuba or just Cuba. So I planted the entire foreground with as much HC Cuba as I could. I had two cups of it, which for a little UNS 5N like this is quite a bit. So I was able to plant really dense and it's gonna look very tall and leggy right now. But once the plant is rooted and we've gotten past that algae phase, I'll you know kind of hack it way down and promote that really dense compact carpeting look. But I prefer not to trim my aquarium plants too early because in the beginning, they're at risk for melt, they're at risk for algae, they're at risk for diatoms. So I wanna make sure I have as much healthy plant mass in the tank in the beginning as possible. 
And with my foreground in place, I decided to add an additional transition and sort of a highlight. So I had some Eliocaris pusilla to work with. So rather than kind of spreading that out evenly, I decided to plant little clumps of it in key spots. And I think it looks really cool and also kind of complements the hydrocotyl verticillata. And then next up in the midground, I planted some Anubius and this Anubius was from my own collection. I often keep epiphytic plants like Anubius and Boos in little Tupperware containers in their immersed state. So I had a little bit of Anubius left over on the side and yeah, it looks a little bit large in this tank, but I had it, so I decided to use it. And once it's rooted and established, I'll just keep it well trimmed and trim off the largest leaves and we'll be able to promote really compact, healthy growth. So this is the Anubius Nana Petite, one of the smaller varieties, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it develops, but I'm just a sucker for epiphytes, so I gotta have it in all my builds. And then finally, it was time to add the biggest highlight of this tank, which is the background plants, the beautiful Rotala Rotundifolia Atra. And Rotala Atra grows this beautiful, vibrant scarlet red, and I look forward to bringing out really nice colors with it. I haven't decided how I'm going to dose this tank, but if you want really vibrant reds, it's a great idea to dose the lean method, which is either a complete lack or very low nitrates. And right now you can't see much of it, but eventually the Rotala Etra will grow really tall and beautiful and vibrant. And I'll sort of sculpt it to, you know, kind of work with the slope of the Cryptocryne green gecko on the left and right. So we'll have a nice sort of arch in the back. And with the planting complete, it's time to flood the tank. And I'm gonna add some helping plants, which in today's case are some beautiful floaters. This is Philanthus fluitans, AKA the red root floater, looking pretty green because it's coming from high nitrate conditions. And the reason I add floaters from day one is that they help promote really clean, healthy growth and soak up those excess waste organics as well as excess ammonia, which new tanks are really prone to in the beginning. So I've got a bunch of those in there and as the weeks go by, I'll sort of remove some of them and thin them out a little bit, keep an eye on things, and I always have an emergency stack on hand in case I ever get an algae outbreak. So with this build complete, I am really happy to say that I think my vision came through and I think the story of that fallen metropolis reclaimed by nature is really evident. So I'm really happy with this and I'm excited to see how it develops. And as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, in the coming weeks, I'll be adding a very, very special fish. So I wanna ask you guys, what is your guess for what fish I'm adding to this tank? It is a single fish that has a ton of personality. And the only hint I'm gonna give you is that it is not a beta. So let me know down below in the comments what your guess is, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. This has been Logan with Logan Reno Aquascaping. Bye-bye.